All right, it's a new year. Is it a new you? I hate that idea. And I'm gonna tell you why, and I'll tell you what I'm not doing any differently. I'm Chris Cuomo. Welcome to the Chris Cuomo Podcast. Thank you for subscribing and following. Thank you for being an independent thinker, a critical thinker, a free agent. What does that mean? You wear your independence. That's why I'm trying to sell the merch, that, and so that we can collect money to give away uh, to charities that we kind of crowdsource in terms of ideas. But I'll make the final choice. It's my money. And uh, I want to thank you for reaching out to News Nation and checking me out every weekday night. Uh, at 8 o'clock and at 10 o'clock Eastern. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Substack, you didn't want ads? Boom, Substack. And to make it more than just an ad play, it's an access play, okay? I'm gonna do phone calls. I'm gonna do Zooms. I'm gonna do group sessions. Uh, About what? Well, about news, about personal journey, about what works professionally, what works from a wellness perspective. There's going to be a lot there that will be very different, and it can be one-on-one as well. Uh, I want to create our own community, a Quomunity, but it's not really about Cuomo. It's about you and how I can help you with whatever you're dealing with. If by only letting you know what I have tried and failed at so that you don't repeat the same mistakes. And that's what takes me in to the new year, new you. There is no new you because there's a new year. Start today. How many of us wait until the new year? That's when I'm going to hit the gym again. That's when I'm going to start the diet. That's when I'm going to call them up. That's when I'm going to call her up. That's when I'm going to reconnect. That's when I'm going to ask the boss. Look, it's why all of these great thinkers tell you don't hit snooze. Because once you start the delay game, it never fucking ends. Okay, I know this. I do this. I, too, am a procrastinator. That is the majority of us. Very few of us are David Goggins. I mean, that's why you know that name. That dude is one of one. Okay, he pushes through mental barriers the way I push through a pint of ice cream. I just warm it up and I'm good to go. And he's the same way. He gets warmed up and he just goes. He breaks. He keeps going. He sees every challenge as an opportunity. He sees every limitation as an ability to overcome. Really, really strong mentals on that guy. Uh, I love that word, mentals, by the way. I got that uh, from the running back from the Seattle um, Seahawks who then went to the Raiders. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, beast mode. You got to take care of your mentals, he said. I love that. So what's the main point? Don't wait for the new year. If it is the new year, don't pick a starting point in the future. It's just now. It's just today. It's just this moment. That's all there is. These grand designs. There's a reason that Christians have the expression, man plans, God laughs. All you have is now. I want to get in better shape. Do something now. Why can't? I'm at work. Eat differently. Uh, Why can't? I do some calf raises. Well, I can't do that. Well, then tonight I'll go take a walk. Why? Well, I, I can't have plans. You see what I'm saying? Listen, this is all bullshit. And I do the same thing, okay? And I do it in lots of different ways that are really, really self-destructive. How about this one? 10 days ago or so, I get sick. I feel it in my face. I always get sinus infections. Why? I have a weak immune system congenitally. Uh, I have a weak immune system from stress and some chemical imbalances. I have a weak immune system from uh, scar tissue in my sinus cavities. Uh, Scar tissue from uh, getting too much, a little bit of it is just anatomical. Some of it is from too many years and you get scar tissue. I had it surgically fixed once. I probably need it again. I don't want to do it again. So I start to get a cold and I don't want to have a cold. So I forget uh, to act like a responsible person. And I'll beat it. I don't need meds. I then start flying all over the country for work. Face is getting hotter and hotter. I'm sweating, low grade fever, all that action. I wait four or five days until I get back from all these airplanes and everything else. And I'm dying. I've been living on NyQuil and Afrin 
so stupid. Why? Because I wanted to delay the acknowledgement of weakness. I wanted to delay uh, the vulnerability. So now I'm on like steroids and antibiotics and all this other shit because I can't lose my voice and be in bed for two days like everybody else. Uh, I got to be on TV. I got to do my job. And I can't look like shit and sound like shit any more than usual. So it was a mistake. Well, how does that feed into procrastinating? It's about delaying the inevitable. Um, why? Because it's going to be difficult. And I didn't want to like actually give into the reality. Okay. So now I pay the price. And I see this in so many people around me, my own family, my friends. And I've taken a long time to kind of research and think and read and do real study on why this is in ways that simplify the situation, not that go into some neuropsychological, you know, conditioning and all this. So look, here's why. What does it speak to? People seek the easy way. Unless you're culturally conditioned by upbringing or community otherwise, people, especially in modern society, are used to convenience, are used to ease. Why work out when I can put on these leggings that like have 90 pounds of compression and make me look like uh, I'm Taylor Swift when uh, I look more like five Taylor Swifts? We take the easy way. Take that Ozempic. Why? Why diet? Why kill myself with exercise? <clears throat> now I don't want to eat. Now my stomach uh, empties more slowly so I don't have ap appetite and people lose weight. Woo! Easy. <sighs> Everything you want is hard, okay? Things that matter in life are hard. It's hard to be fat and deal with that sense of self and your health and your limitations and your, uh, your ego and your, uh, your sense of self-confidence. And it's hard to be fit. So to quote Mike Tyson, which again, 20 years ago, I would have never thought I'd be doing this unless it was about something absurd. But the guy really has come a long way in terms of his thinking. You have to do what you hate and do it like you love it. Now, that's really interesting. And that's his take on discipline. Discipline doesn't mean punish. Does, discipline doesn't mean harshness. Discipline means to follow. It comes from the word disciple, okay? Like Jesus' disciples. And that's the reality. You have to change your mindset. And that's not about a future date. Look, it can be. But that is usually counterproductive because you're just putting it off and giving you more of a chance to screw up. And again, I do this all the time. And you may look at me and say, well, but look at you, you're in shape. I'm in shape despite this because I have to compensate all the time. I have to work out like a savage to make up for the fact that I'll binge eat because I'm stressed out or I'm upset about something. And I'll then eat a pint of ice cream or like I'll like get my dosage of THC wrong and get the munchies and like eat two pints of ice cream. And then I'll work out like a savage for four days and not eat anything. That's stupid, that kind of yo-yo behavior. And it really goes to what I'm going to do as a reset for this year. And I feel like I do it every year <laughs> since I got uh, more into try to think about the why of things and the philosophy of things. I have so many repetitive negative behaviors that hurt me, that hurt others, that take advantage of me, that take advantage of others, knowingly, unknowingly, consciously, unconsciously. And does it have to be that way? Not to this degree. And for me, it's about micro adjustments, micro adjustments. Little things lead to big things. Uh, Kai Green, the great bodybuilder, says thoughts become things. It's true. But I think it's better that thoughts about little things drive little things to lead to bigger things. 
Man, how's your sleep game? How is it? Because if it ain't great, check your sheets. Check your bedding. One out of three Americans report being sleep deprived. Bedding can be the problem, all right? Wrong sheets, why do they suck? Because they don't move right. They trap body heat, boil one minute, freeze in the next, there's a solution. And it checks so many boxes. Cozy earth sheets. They breathe, baby. You sleep at the perfect temperature all year round. I know because I do. And I have sleep problems and there's no question this has been better. And I also like the look better. I like how they launder better. And there's another great part. Cozy Earth's best-selling bamboo sheet set is made from Weisskaus bamboo. Temperature regulating. Only gets softer with every wash. Look, some people say viscous. Some people say viscous. You say it, viscous. You say it any way you want. The concept is the same. It's bamboo, baby. You know what that means? We ain't killing trees to make textiles here that we need for our forests. Bamboo is so sustainable. It's perfect for this. And that was what really pushed me over. Because look, like most guys, I don't think bedding like on a regular basis. But when I found out about Cozy Earth and that all their products can be returned or exchanged within 100 days, and that they have a 10-year warranty against defects. Are you kidding me? I got three dogs. This is a home run. You go to CozyEarth.com and enter the code CHRIS at checkout, and you save up to 35% on your first order. Hello, gift idea. CozyEarth.com, promo code CHRIS. CozyEarth.com. All right. You done with the ads? Fine. I'm on Substack now, okay? You'll get ad-free content. There are going to be exclusive videos there, and there's going to be an exclusivity of exchange, okay? So there's going to be a lot of stuff that will be familiar. It's going to be deeper. It's going to be more personal, and there's going to be more me and you. The Chris Cuomo Project dot Substack dot com. Five bucks a month so I can pay the bills, okay? It gives a little bit of commitment from you, and that's okay because it'll make you pay attention. Uh, and, and... It'll be more focused and it will be without any distractions. All right? That's the Chris Cuomo Project.substack.com. You get access to me, my experiences, and what I've learned that hopefully helps you. For my yearly reset, as a reminder of the, you don't wait till New Year's. All right? So here we are in the middle of December. And I have already started doing what I always do this time of year, which is I started a new fitness uh, regimen. I believe in changing it up like every three months. Why? Uh, a couple of basic reasons. One, muscle confusion. The body learns and adapts very quickly. You ever see the sloppy, marginally in shape person in the gym who's like on that one cardio machine for like an hour and 10 minutes while you do an entire body workout and they're still kind of skinny fat or soft or whatever? That's because the body adapts and you've got to create muscle confusion and metabolic confusion. Look it up. You'll see. And uh, do your research. Don't try anything without doing your research. Not because some warning about talking to your doctor before you exercise. You know that. You're not a dope. It's just know what you're doing and understand the why of why you're doing it. It's just common sense. Too many people go into things blindly. Why do you drink that? Why do you eat that? Oh, someone told me that. Really? Someone? With as many dumb asses as we're surrounded by? And that person is probably under the influence of some other dumb ass? Just do the research yourself. Do the research yourself. So I change the fitness regimen about every three months. Why? Muscle confusion, lack of boredom. Um, I'm older. Gives me different goal targets. Gives me different uh, chances at that euphoria of accomplishment. So, well, like what? What does that mean? Well, last year at this time, I did a gain mode where for three months, I ate and lifted a lot more weights than usual and did all this power stuff. I'm not doing that again. That was too hard, and I did get bigger because I used to be much bigger and heavier, so I have some muscle memory working in my favor, but I don't want to be any bigger. 
I felt I was so heavy. You know, I was like 230 something pounds. It's just too much. So what I'm going to do is the next three months, I'm going to spend on athleticism. Now, I got to be careful at my age because, you know, I'm going to pull my hamstring. You know, you'll hurt yourself. So I'm going to work on um, jumping ability and sprinting ability, sprinting in quotes, because I'll probably only wind up going like 85%. Because I don't want to hurt myself. And I have realistic goals and I really just want change and I just want to push myself. And it's about micro targets. So micro targeting is what? Micro targeting is, oh, I don't know. I just made it up. No, I'm kidding. Micro adjustments, micro targeting is little things. Um, Read about intermittent fasting. Read about what you need at breakfast. Read about when you should take in certain things. If you give a shit. Now, if you don't give a shit about any of this kind of stuff, then don't do it. Make micro adjustments in relationships that matter to you or dynamics that do matter to you. Maybe it's about something in your house that you've wanted to change and have it. Maybe it's a friendship with a sibling or a loved one uh, or a lover or at work. Micro adjustments. Um, What does that mean? Take small steps. Just really small steps. No, too small. I'm going to start bigger. Take small steps. Uh, uh, Okay, it's diet. Uh, I eat cookies again. Ah, shit. Here we go. Eat one less cookie than you want. Oh, but that's meaningless. I'm not going to lose weight. It gets you going in the right direction. And you do it now. And you make the adjustments immediately. That is the best way to create change. Not in the new year, I'm going to do this. And through the holidays, I'm going to eat like I'm dead man walking. You know, and this is it. I'm the condemned, so I might as well do this. That is weakness. And before you make any change in your life, you have to accept a couple of things. First one is weakness is human. We are all weak. I am probably more weak than most um, in terms of vulnerabilities and flaws and habits and idiosyncrasies and mistakes and regrets and major fuck-ups that'll never go away and I have to live with uh, and pay for in multiple ways for a really long time, probably um, until I die. Um, Jeez, would you kill somebody? No, but all pain is personal and and how you feel about it is how you feel about it. And you got to work on that, and I do. But you're going to have your weaknesses, so don't shy away from them. Lean into them. Stoics, amor fati, Nietzsche, uh, Uh, coined the phrase, uh, but it's stoic philosophy. I know he was an existential, you know, nothing matters, nihilism and all that bullshit, but he actually evolved on that. But whatever, study Nietzsche in your own time. The point is, amor fate means love all that's made. Love what happens. What do I mean? Why would I love bad shit? You don't love bad shit, but you try to look at it as what do I learn? How do I avoid the bad shit next time? What can I do to get past this bad shit? How can I use it to an advantage? All right. Uh, a lawnmower threw a rock, shattered a window in my house. I had to replace it. It was a gazillion dollars. Um, so I was like, hey, you know what? I always hated that this room, that that window didn't open anyway. Modern house, you know, just panes of glass. So I switched it to that kind of window. I mean, it's not exactly a win-win, but shit, it was a bad situation. I might as well do something with it. See what I'm saying? Um, when I get injured, like uh, when I, I hurt my neck, and I couldn't really work on upper body. I started doing a ton of lower body stuff. Why? I might as well do something. Lean into your weakness. So that's the first thing is that we're all weak, okay? And the second thing is you got to lean into your weakness. Don't do the work of the weakness for the weakness. Put it off until New Year's. Don't do it. If it matters, start today. Just start in a little way. You can add to it then. You know, you can blow it out later. But start now. And... You have to make a choice, okay? I believe that change works better for me when it is multivariate, when it is comprehensive. What does that mean? So when I'm going to start something new, and again, I'm starting something new all the time because I believe in micro adjustments, all right? I'm going to get into a cleaning mode when I'm getting into a diet mode. And I'm going to go through my closets 
and I'm going to take all the clothes that I don't wear, and I'm going to give them away, and I'm going to do the same thing with my shoes, and I'm going to go through my investments, and I'm going to see what money I haven't spent on legal bills and see where there is and what I can do. I start trying to look at everything everything. I make lists of relationships I've neglected in my life, relationships I've given too much time to in my life. Um, Now, you'll notice I haven't mentioned work a lot, and I haven't mentioned it on my list at all. Why? Work mattered too much to me. And when it was taken from me, it destabilized me. It scrambled my eggs. It embarrassed me that it meant so much to lose a platform at CNN that I never realized Um, my level of celebrity and people who knew me and all the shine from the pandemic and all this other stuff. I never really appreciated it. So what? And I was sickened by my need for that and my, my being upset that I never really appreciated it. And I made a decision that I'm gonna do things differently. And to me, I like comprehensive. So when I'm in a phase of trying to do things differently, I do a lot of things differently. I'm building a model car right now. I'm reading a different kind of book than I usually do. Now, and some of the things I just fail on, I have a book that I wrote for you guys about the pandemic and lessons we learned that I'm afraid we're gonna repeat, not necessarily with another pandemic, but with other types of mass infections of the social variety. And I just can't finish it. I had a publishing deal. They went bad on me when CNN fired me. I'm in litigation on both sides. Um, And I could self-publish it. I own it. But I just haven't gotten around to do it. Why? I feel like I'm going to put it out. And for some people, it'll be useful. But it'll make all these other people call me some kind of like vax pusher or some other bullshit. Um, You know, look, I, I took the vaccine. I haven't had any boosters. Why? I've had COVID like four times and my doctors say that I should have enough immunity. So I don't take them. So I'm not pushing it on you. I was just being honest with you at the time. They're telling you we should take it. I'm taking it because I want to be out in society. I don't believe it's going to hurt me. So I took it and I said to you, you don't want to take it, don't take it. But you can't expect to get access to all the things that everybody else is going to if they're taking it because that's the rule. You know, I feel the same way about assault. Hey, You want to go punch that guy in the face because he's an asshole. Go ahead. But there's a chance you're going to get arrested and you're going to have to pay for it. You know, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just telling you that if you don't do it, you know, there's consequences. You get my point. So I haven't done it. But that's okay because nothing is perfect. You're not going to get everything done. But you will get nothing done by delaying. Okay? So I'm telling you. I've learned this. I've done it. You know how many gym memberships I've started and then had to freeze and forget? Come on. Start now. And start small. Start like, and again, diet is just easier to talk about. It's harder to do, by the way. But, you know, little people have swear jars. That's not my thing. I don't give power to language that way. I really think it's fucking stupid that, oh, he said the F word. Vulgarity is what's happening in Gaza. Vulgarity is what's happening on the campuses. Vulgarity is the shoplifting that's going on. Vulgarity is the incivility, walking past homeless people. That's vulgar to me. Not using a curse word. Give me a break. The N-word scares my children like it was a bomb. But are they going out of their way to make connections with people of different races and faces? Are, Are we obsessed with how we treat each other or just how we speak about each other? That's what political correctness has wrought. Don't say that. Oh, but you can still feel it and act on it as long as you just don't let anybody know. See, I don't care what you call me as long as you treat me the right way. You see what I'm saying? Now, is how you speak to someone part of how you treat them? Yes. But we've gotten way out of whack on this. Why? We don't value things the right way. And that's all part of this cycle, okay? You want to make change? Good. You don't want to make change? Fine. You want to make change? Okay. What? Write it down. I want to change this. I want to change that. I want to change this. Start today. Start today. Start something small. Say hello to somebody. Give somebody a hug. Tell somebody you're sorry. Take a walk. Hit the gym. Don't stuff your face. 
Don't be an asshole. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, start small. Start now. That's what I'm doing. I'm actually in the city three days this week. I'm usually only in one. Why? Because there have been people that I've been putting off seeing, and it's wrong. If they matter to you, put in the time. And I want to do better, so I'm here. Now, this is not starting small. For me to be away from my kids for three days is something. But it's balance. It's balance. And they're teenagers. They don't really want me around anyway. So for the new year, start now. Start small. Forgive yourself for forgetting and missing and relapsing. The biggest reason that people fall off diets is that they fall off the diet and then make it a trend. They have a bad meal and then they say, well, the whole day's blown. I just had that chopped cheese bullshit sandwich that Greg brought me, so I might as well eat Chinese tonight. No, keep it small. Step in the wrong direction, step back. Doesn't have to be one step forward, two steps back, okay? Inertia's okay, right? Stagnation's okay, it's okay, but you just wanna do what you can to nudge it forwards. So you don't stay stuck there. And little things will make that easier than big things. It'll work a trick on your mind. Thoughts become things. Micro adjustments can become major achievements. Micro adjustments can become major achievements. That's why you got these leaders who say, in the morning, uh, wake, up your, wake up and make your bed. Why? Because it just sets you on a path of doing things the right way. It makes sense. It makes sense. Don't hit snooze. Now, do I hit snooze? Yeah. Well, do I do all these things that I'm telling you not to do? Yeah. (laughs) Why? Because I'm a flawed mofo. That's why. But I also know what the fix is. And I know what the right way is. It doesn't mean I do it. Very often I'm speaking to you about things that I understand that I've learned very often the hard way. And... I don't want you to make the same mistakes. I don't want you to go through the same process. I want you to benefit. The best messages I get are from people who said, hey, you know, I heard this, I read that, and I did this differently. I'm like, oh, man, am I happy for that person. I'm glad that they did it the easy way as opposed to how it has been for me. Now, look, there but for the grace, there are a lot of people who have it a lot worse than I do, and I know that. And I'm appreciative of it. But look, at the end of the day, you're not living anybody's life but your own. And all pain is personal. I'm not a guru. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not playing one on TV. Uh, And I don't give a fuck what any hater says about what I do until and unless they want to say it right to me. And we'll have a discussion about it. But I promise you, most of the people who come at me would not come to me. I promise you that. Why? Because people are weak and noisy and they benefit from it on social media. There's a commodity in being crass and by attacking that it's a a proxy for strength, but they're just fucking noise. Listen to your own voices, the people that you care about, and start small. Micro adjustments become major achievements. Start now. Start small. That's what I'm going to try to do. And we'll keep talking, especially if you're on the Substack. And I'll tell you what I'm into. We can do things together. We can give each other challenges and see who falls short. I'll probably wind up paying a lot of these bets. But that's okay. That's okay. If it helps you get to a better place, that's helping me get to a better place. So I wish you the best. But wishes are nothing without actions. So think about it. It's hard. It's hard to do, but it's hard to not do because you're going to pay the price either way. The best to you for the year and the best to you for making it the best for you. Micro adjustments, major achievements. Let's get after it.